everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to talk about why I think that the Google Pixel 6 is probably the best alternative for BlackBerry users at the end of 2021, going into 2022. If you're a BlackBerry 10 user, you know that BlackBerry 10, or hopefully you know this, that BlackBerry 10 will be end of life the first week of 2022. That's just two months away. It really has been on its last leg for a long time anyway, but you probably, you probably do know that. Uh, when it comes to the Android devices, we're on Android 12 now. This is running the latest and greatest Android 12. If you're using a Key 1, if you're using a Motion, a Key 2, it's running Android 8. It's four years behind the power curve now, and it's not ever going to be updated either. So you need something modern. You need something sleek. You need something with security, which as much as you might want to eye roll about Google and their security, it's pretty secure. <laughs> the thing is you just have to worry about them taking your data, <laughs> which I mean, at this point in time, it's either Apple or Google. So it's not really a whole lot out there, but with the Titan M2 security chip, it makes it a very, very good secure alternative in the Google world. And also it's got a lot of other top branded features. It's got arguably one of the best smartphone cameras in the business. It's got a great price at $599. It's got Google's new Tensor chip, a 6.4 inch 90 hertz refresh rate screen. It's an AMOLED display with a 4600 milliamp battery. So you're going to get a nice big display. Of course, it's missing a physical keyboard. But if you look around the landscape, pretty much everything is missing a physical keyboard nowadays other than, well, the Unihertz Titan and the Titan Pocket, which you can get. But even this, I've got question marks about whether it's going to work with voice over LTE, especially with carriers like AT&T. So if you've got AT&T, I don't really even recommend a whole lot of people go out and get this because I, I'm not certain that's even going to work once we get into January. I haven't gotten an answer back for Unihertz. So right now I'm focusing on price, performance, battery life, security, and multimedia experience, and also a typing experience. And this has probably the best haptic feedback. It's great for typing, big, beautiful display, great for multimedia, great for getting work done. I mean, if you compare it to even the best that we ever had with the BlackBerry with the 4.5 inch screen, this is a lot bigger and better. So you can do a lot of things. And also BlackBerry is not supporting the apps on the Android devices on Android 8 or newer or older in a couple of months as well. So you're going to be looking for alternatives. You need something that you can move over to that you can have as seamless of a transition as possible. You get the stock Android experience when it comes to the Pixel 6. There's a lot of good things going for it. And I've really enjoyed the Pixel 6 Pro. I went out and I got the Pixel 6. I paid for it. I've been testing this one out as well. And I think it brings a lot of stuff to the table. A lot of core things that we appreciate there. You've got power and sophistication. You've got security. You've got I mean, all the browsers you can choose from. You don't ever have to worry with app support with this stuff. I mean, it's going to be supportive for up to five years. So you're going to get your money's worth. There's not a lot of people in the BlackBerry world that want to go spend $1,000, $1,100, $1,200 $1, on a phone. We never really were in that category. I mean, shoot, the last you know bastions of hope with the BlackBerry mobile devices were around the $600 price point with the Key 2 and even cheaper with the Key 2 LE. So... Yeah, you don't want to go spend a thousand dollars. You want something that's relatively secure, at least nowadays. I mean, shoot, there's not there's not a whole lot out there that probably in the Apple and Google and Samsung world that is not more secure than some of the Blackberries at this point. Because let's face it, the BlackBerry Key One has not had a security patch update since April 2019. So these phones, as much as we love them, and as much as we're not going to find an alternative in the physical keyboard world, unless somehow Onward Mobility decides that they want to make an announcement and let people know what's going on at some point. And as long as the phone gets here like it's supposed to, but it was supposed to be here by the end of June, and now we're, well, it's November. So July, August, September, October, November. It's like five months late. So, yeah, there's a wide need out in the BlackBerry community for a new phone. And if you need one, I want to make sure that you have a good option, a good alternative, and you have some direction in where to go. If I were to recommend another Android phone for somebody leaving BlackBerry today, it would be this. Because it has everything that I think that you need and more, and it's just a really fantastic phone. So that's kind of the basis for this video. I know I've been talking for five minutes now. I'm not going to go into the normal spiel, but when you look at what it brings to the table on paper... 6.4 inch screen, Tensor chip, which is nice. You get all these software and services stuff. You get Magic Eraser, which if you want to take some top-notch photos and then take things out of it, you can do that. You can speak directly to it. It'll translate and it'll say even what you're saying in another language so you can communicate with somebody. And you also get like the Google Call Assistant. 
there are so many different software related features inside of this phone that it makes it really neat and can also help you out with your business. If you're doing international work and you need to be able to communicate or figure out what's going on, you can plug it, type it, speak it directly into your phone. You get a great battery with the 4600 milliamp. Yeah, it's got a 90 hertz refresh rate, full HD plus screen, which is nice. It's a beautiful screen and it's got a nice form factor to it. Some people arguably say, okay, they don't like this camera bump. It's very functional and it takes fantastic photos. So you're not really missing out there. And you're going to get way better battery life on this likely than you did with any of the last couple of Blackberries because even though they had large batteries at the time, still have over a thousand milliamp less hours than this guy right here. So $599. Also, you get five years of software and security updates, which is really good. Uh, I don't think that we're getting the operating systems for a full five years. I think that's four. Three, three at the minimum. I think it might be four. And then you get five years of security patches. So if you buy this at $599 today... 2021, you're covered 2022, 2023, 2024, 25, like I think up to like 2026. That's a really long time. And this is not like BlackBerry where it's like, hey, we made the phone. Oh, wait, you're never getting another operating system update. And we're going to give you two years of security patches. Those days are long gone. This is a very viable option. Also, it's great to type on. Yes, you probably want the physical keyboard. I do too. And there is some learning involved. But if there's no physical keyboard... This one right here, I think, is probably the best on the market. It's already got Google's Gboard keyboard on it, which is my preferred one. I think it's the best. It's my favorite. You get swipe typing, which actually works really good. It's a great thing to move over from. Uh, I really enjoyed using swipe typing, where you just kind of draw and connect the letters together. I was kind of standoffish about it at first for a few years, but now I use it all the time. It's just a great phone, I think. It's got class. It's got sophistication. It's got power. You can do anything that you want with it. It's not like, oh, well, I got to use this. I got to do this workaround. I've got this old app. I got all those things you don't have to worry about anymore. And you can get all the BlackBerry apps that you want that are available on here because they're still supported on Android 9 or newer. So that's something you don't get with any BlackBerry. And at this point in time, if you're moving over from a BlackBerry 10 or a legacy device or one that doesn't get supported by Voice over LTE uh, because it doesn't have it, then you need a new phone. And there's no BlackBerry available right now. So I think it's irresponsible to say, just keep hanging out for these guys that are, you know, haven't given us a phone and said it was going to be here at the end of June. If you need something, go get it. If you can afford to wait, you can continue to wait. That's, that's your prerogative. And hopefully at some point in time, Onward Mobility will make an announcement. But at this point, there's no public information out there. There's nothing that indicates it's going to be here anytime soon. And these phones are going to be dead in two months. BlackBerry 10 devices, legacy devices. If it doesn't support voice over LTE, it won't work at all basically in the U.S. once we get to January, February this upcoming year. So you need something. If you need something, I thought I've been using this. I was really interested to get my hands on it, test it out. I'm going to be making a lot of videos about this phone, so stay tuned for those. I've made a lot of Pixel 6 Pro videos. If you want to check that out, that gives you a really good indicator of what this phone can do because they're very, very identical other than like some camera and screen enhancement stuff going on. But core performance is going to be the same. And yeah, I just think this is a good phone. And I'm concerned for people out there who need a new device, who are worried and wondering what they want to move over to once their BlackBerry stops working. I put a lot of thought into this. I waited till the end of the year so that I could get my hands on this phone and it doesn't disappoint. I think if you pick one up, I think you'll be happy with it. I think you'll be very much enjoying the benefits and all the different things that it offers and not be behind the power curve, not having to use old stuff, not having to use outdated hardware and software and having all the software and services available that you need to get your work done, to get through life, to take pictures, to enjoy your phone. And it's got battery that's going to get you through the day. And I just think it's a nice phone, especially at $599. At $599, there's nothing like this out in the Android market and I know a lot of people, you know, you're using a BlackBerry phone now. It's running Android. You don't want to switch over to Apple. If you do, you can go pick up the iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 Pro. They're going to serve you very well. Also good alternatives too. So that's all I've got in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.